Hey, 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 while I'm talking, I need y'all to shut the hell up. So I tell you, I tell you what, I tell you what. <laughs> y'all like what I did to Joe Harrison a few weeks ago, didn't you? Oh, you like it? Huh? Y'all want to cheer for me now? Huh? Y'all don't give a damn about me. And I don't give a damn about you. Just sit down before I come over there and slap you right in the mouth. See, I told Joe Harrison months ago when we won those world tag titles to stop giving a damn about you people and he wouldn't listen to me. And what happens? We lose to a bunch of dumb cowboys in the middle of this ring because of him. Because he wanted to listen to you, the people. I'm tired of listening to the damn people because you people have never done a damn thing for me. And see, that right there is the other problem. That right there, in the turn of a hat, you can hate or love somebody, and I never understand it. You people just a few weeks ago were telling me how much you loved me. You were messaging me on Facebook, wouldn't leave me the hell alone, telling me hello. No! Now you say I suck. You know what really sucks? Every single one of you. Because I can go ahead and tell you, there's not a single person in this crowd that can do what I do. There's not somebody in the back that can do what I do. I'm the best damn thing in the IWF, and you people don't appreciate me. Oh, don't cheer now. The cheer is done. The cheer is done. I don't give a damn. Uh-oh. Looks like somebody's tired of hearing Mick and Pope talk. Interrupting Mickey Pope's tirade to the crowd. The THC. Maybe they've come out here to try to uh, mellow Mickey out, if you know what I mean. Mickey right now, he is fuming. He is not happy at all right now that he was interrupted. Don't dance! Sit down! Don't dance! You really need to sit down. Why aren't you wearing shoes? You're disgusting. Who out here ain't without shoes? Put some shoes on. I know you can go to Walmart and buy some five dollar flip flops. Put them on. what Buddy Flowers has to say. Last week you loved me. You wouldn't stay out of my knee. Sit your big ass down. Sit on down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. What's going on, Mount Airy? Now I know, Mickey, you've had a change of heart here recently. And as everyone knows, someone's been roaming around, beating me up, attacking me from behind, and there's only been one name, one name in the past few weeks that's been coming up, my guy, and it wasn't the mouse. So, Mickey, I'm here to ask you, face to face, man to man, why'd you do it? Why'd I do what? Why are you out here interrupting my time? What are, you what are you accusing me of doing? Mickey, everyone knows you're the person that came out here, pushed me off that top, and cost me that match. You've been attacking me, Mickey. Just admit it. I've been attacking you. You know, He's you say I had a change of heart, brother. Let me uh, explain something to you here. This ain't a change of heart. This is how I've always been. I've been playing these dumbass marks for years now to get their money. That's all it is. And you, hey, I'll tell you what, the reason you know I didn't buy my t-shirts because I don't get them in big enough sizes with your big fat ass. Hey, I'll tell you what, if I wanted to attack you, I wouldn't need to put on a mask to do it. I'd slap you right in the mouth face to face like a man. Mickey, Mickey, come on, man. Just, everybody's here. Every, we're all in the ring. We're not, we don't, we're not trying to force you to do anything. Just admit it, man. It was you. I'm not admitting nothing to you, man. I didn't do nothing. I, I wish you, I wish you the best of luck in figuring it out, but you got the wrong guy. I'm not worried about dumbass buddy flowers. Mickey, if I can't talk it out of you, maybe I can, I can fight it out of you, Mickey. Oh, 
Now he's talking Mickey's language. Can you repeat that real quick? Just, just say it loud, and loud again. Say it. You, you heard me, Mickey. You don't want to talk. I can't get you to admit it with words. But maybe if you get in here and we fight, maybe then you'll want to do some talking. You want to fight me? If you want to fight me takes, tonight? Mickey, if that's what it takes. Okay, it's your death wish, son. I got a lot of pissed off energy in me, and I'm about to kill you tonight. Y'all hear it, folks? Buddy Flowers and Mickey Fault! Let's go! Should be an interesting matchup. I'm really looking forward to this fight between Buddy Flowers and, uh, and Mickey Fault. But right now, right now, folks, we're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Visit King's Hot Dogs in Village Square Plaza in Rural Hall and tame your savage hunger. That was perfect. That was right in the middle. It was, you got your little token, which was, you know, kind of bad boy, but that's good, that's good. Perfect, exactly what I want, exactly. So, now I have something else for you planned for a couple of shows from now. So me and you, we're gonna, we're gonna be a team. We're gonna show Kevin Phoenix how bad he did the AIWF. We're gonna take it, me and you, to the tip top. And we're gonna leave Kevin Phoenix. Advance in the Don Carson Memorial Tag Team Tournament. And their opponents. And again, a new tag team here to AWF Mid Atlantic. Wanting to advance. Teams from all over wanting a shot at this prestigious tag team tournament that memorializes one of the greatest tag team wrestlers in AWF history, Dangerous Don Carson. No better way to uh, to honor his memory than with this tag team tournament with the best of the best the IWF has to offer. And uh, I haven't seen either one of these teams. Ladies and gentlemen of the following contest. I'm forward to it is a tag team match that is part of the Don Carson Memorial Tag Team Tournament. <laughs> Introducing first, with a total combined weight of 410 pounds, this is the Rhinestone Cowboy! And their opponents, with a total of a combined weight of 325 pounds, this is Steve and Robert, the Allen Brothers. And they're uh, accompanied to the ring by their, uh, uh, by their brother Mason, who is not competing tonight. He's just here uh, with, uh, for moral support. For his uh, for his two brothers, again, a lot of teams from from all over wanted to be a part of this prestigious tournament. Looking forward to seeing these two, two guys competing. A little bit of strutting there by uh, looks like. Uh, Willie Storm of the Rhinestone Cowboys going to start off this match against um, Robert Allen. He definitely has the uh, the weight advantage and uh, probably the strength advantage too. 
Oh, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I, I believe this is the first time that we've ever seen any of these two tag teams in the, uh, here in the AIWF both making a debut here. Again, Willie Storm seems to have the um, strength advantage on Robert Allen. Robert doing the right thing, working his way over to the ropes, breaking the breaking the hold. Oh, will oh will come nice in for headlock. a clothesline swing wildly. I believe that's Robert Duck got him. Oh, he tried to go for my big shoulder goodness tackle. Gracious. Another big shoulder tackle. I tell you, um, Robert Allen is going to have to try another strategy. Big slam by Storm. He has got he has got uh, Robert Allen laid out on the on the mat uh, very early on in this matchup. Goes to make the tag to his uh, his tag team partner Logan Taylor. Got him up. Nice slam there by Taylor. Storm and Taylor trying oh. to get the crowd behind him. He? Oh, he's, he was trying to pick up. Oh. Yeah, that looks to be the smarter strategy there. Oh! Robert gave Robert just enough time to recover, but he's not making the tag. Might be making a mistake. Big oh, shot there by my Taylor. Goodness. Big chop by Robert. And another double chop by Taylor. Got him hooked. Up? Suplex. Big suplex. And uh, Robert Allen in big trouble here early on, very early on in this matchup. Desi. He's going de to desperately need to make a tag to maybe try to reset this matchup. Because right now, the Rhinestone Cowboys have this match firmly in control. Yeah, that they do. Oh, oh what nice a combination boot. big boot side rushing leg sweep by the Rhinestone Cowboys. Yeah, the uh, the now uh, world tag team champions, the Rustlers, also Cowboys. Nice arm drag there by Storm. Taking away any momentum from Steve, the other Allen brother. He's able to fuck. Oh, oh, Steve trying to go for an arm He went for an arm drag, but. Uh, oh, instead he comes flying to the outside Alan here Storm close to the announce table. Overpowered him. He's out here close to us. Storm. Very smart. Yeah, very smart. He called Alan, him in. Allen Brothers oh, trying to lure again. him in. Sucker him with that elbow drop. But uh, Storm saw it coming. I don't think he's going to listen to you, Steve. No. Maybe if you say please. Oh, it's nothing sacred anymore. No, even the pinky promise ain't sacred anymore. Apparently here. not. All My fair in love and war, though. Exactly. Oh, what a jaw Big buster. counter there. By, uh, oh, okay, there we go. That's what I was wondering why he wasn't going after his man immediately. It's because he wanted to uh, give Mason an opportunity to interject himself physically in this matchup. Oh, yeah. Got a one count on Storm. And Steve. just like that, the Allen brothers have taken control of this matchup after uh, after the uh, Rhinestone Cowboys had uh, had full advantage for a very long time. 
Nice takedown. He's Allen Brothers. Big obviously. double leg drop. He's Allen Brothers. They have, uh, 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 yeah, now that they had the advantage, they're showing that they had the uh, technical prowess to uh, to possibly win this matchup. Oh, yeah, you exactly right. They struggled at the beginning. Nice double team maneuver there. I think the, the uh, Rhinestone Cowboys really uh, threw them off their game, but uh, looks like they've, they're finally. And again, quick tags in and out. Another no, double, double team, team maneuver. Centon with the assist. Nice maneuver there. Still just kick out at one. Again, Steve, Steve Allen thinks he can simply talk his opponent into doing what he wants. I don't think that's. Uh, I mean, you can give it a try, but uh, I don't think. I don't think. Uh, I don't think that, Storm is going to listen to him. No, nah, I mean it really didn't quite work out for him a while ago, and he told him to stop rolling in. He, he come down and he dropped a third elbow and nobody at home again. Oh, and now he chops his own partner. Wow, and it's interesting. Oh, double. Nice double team maneuver there. And very smart stopping the tag to Taylor by Storm. Storm is really taking a beating in this matchup in the last few minutes. Oh, big clothesline. Big splash there by Steve. Now Robert wants to get back in. Again, quick tags in and out. The double team, that's exactly what they need to do. Oh, oh he broke it. through it. Oh, hey, big double clothesline. My goodness. A He's move got, out of desperation there. It certainly was a desperation maneuver. It was uh, very effective. Yeah, he needs to get over it, there and make a tag. He does, but it, it took you can tell it took a lot out of him to uh, uh, to accomplish that maneuver to to break the the double clothesline and to to give one of his own. He exerted a there lot of energy by doing it. He got the tag, oh. and here comes Taylor throwing elbows. Nice move there by Taylor. Up and over. Got him again, up and over. Yet again. Logan Taylor. Nobody's listening to him. Don't look like he's making too much progress. Of, oh! Nice neck breaker My there. My goodness. This could be it right here. Barely kick out Whoa. by Steve Allen. That was about as close as close can get right there. It certainly is. And Taylor's doing the right thing, staying on top of him, going to the corner and tagging in the guy, or uh, tagging in Willie Storm. Yeah, Austin able to uh, to get a breather. But Robert. Robert comes in. And again, you may not like it, but it's, uh, it's a... Uh, Smart strategy. Now here comes Mason. What's going to the? He has no reason to be up there. Referee trying to get him down. Oh, oh low blow! What a low blow there. Now Mason. The roll up with the with that low blow. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match, advancing. To the next round in the Don Carson Memorial Tag Team Tournament, Stephen Robert, the Allen Brothers. Well, folks, the uh, the Rhinestone Cowboys uh, they put up a good fight, and uh, but uh, in the end, it was three on one, and uh, with yep. the assist, they were. Uh, the Allen brothers were able to, to get the win and advance in the Don Carson Memorial Tournament. But, uh, but folks, uh, let's give it up for the uh, Rhinestone Cowboys. But right now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.
Fans, this is Mad Matt Carter along with AIWF Hall of Famer Brian Danty telling you and reminding you about the most awesome, at least we think so, wrestling podcast there is. It's AIWF Ringside Wrestling, and it comes your way on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, just to name a few. Brian, they can also see it on YouTube, but the cool thing about our podcast it's completely live and interactive every Sunday night on Facebook. Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, we get into uh, all the all the uh, the news of AIWF, WWE, TNA, all all of it. We don't just cover AIWF; we cover we cover the whole spectrum of wrestling. You can comment. You can you can put comments in there. We'll answer your questions. It, it's a great time, and sometimes. Most of the time we're talking about wrestling, sometimes it goes off the rails, and that's just that. Sometimes that's even more entertaining. Yeah, that's part of part of the charm, I guess, of the show, right? So be sure to tune in anywhere you find your favorite podcast on the AIWF Ringside Wrestling YouTube channel, and of course on Facebook Live on Sunday night for the most interactive wrestling podcast in the United States. It's AIWF Ringside Wrestling. And ladies and gentlemen, we're joined once again by. Mr. Seth Myers at ringside here at the commentator's table. Thanks for having me here. As always, <laughs> it's a pleasure. But I'm here for a reason, and that's because I have been watching Nicky Fulp since I've arrived back in February, and I have been his biggest critic. Well, tonight, he's finally seen the error of his ways, and he can finally get on the winning track. Well, yeah, I'm in the sure ring of this palm, weighing in like at 190 you. pounds, standing five foot eleven, from Western Salem, North Carolina, Mickey Ford. He even got smarter left king and his opponent. Salem, the better big city. Yep. I'm getting ready to be with the clouds, Buddy Flowers. Yep. And of course, Buddy Flowers issued this challenge because he believes that Mickey Fulp, even though Mickey Fulp denies it, that he was the masked man that attacked him a few weeks ago, he thinks that uh, if he can't uh, talk a confession out of him, he thinks maybe he can fight a confession out of him. Well, I've said it many times, there is no one tougher than Mickey Fulp. So Buddy Flowers better look to beat hard if he thinks he's going to get an answer out of Mickey Fulp. Yeah, I, th I think I tend to agree with you uh, whether or not... Um, whether or not uh, Buddy Flowers can defeat Mickey Fulp in a matchup, they, uh, whether or not I believe I believe that Buddy Flowers can defeat Mickey Fulp in a matchup one on one. However, do I think that he can beat and his him opponent out of him? Now that's another story. Weighing in tonight at 82,000 grams. Standing at a whopping 2,880 ounces. He is the THCEO of THC from High Point, North Carolina. Buddy Flowers! Very High Point, North Carolina. The highest point in North Carolina. It is when he's there. You know, buddy, this time, though, he's brought some reinforcements out here. So we've talked about this. A masked man assaulted Buddy Flowers. Buddy believes it's Mickey Fulp. But Buddy has two guys outside here. So maybe Buddy's having his own doubts if Mickey Fulp did it. That's true. Yeah, uh, uh, I guess it wouldn't hurt to have the uh, have the backup. 
And Mickey Fulp, this is smart. You don't want, you know, pulling a muscle in a match like this can be detrimental. Mickey Fulp knows what it takes to be a winner. He is the second longest reigning Mid-Atlantic Cruiserweight champion. He is a former, well, I could list exactly this, but we'd be here all night me doing it. But Mickey Fulp is no slouch. That's what I'm getting at. You're exactly right. He's not a slouch. And uh, I'm sure he already did his stretches before this matchup. Uh, it wasn't really about it wasn't really about stretching. It's about uh, stalling and uh, making his opponent wait. And I believe Buddy just tickled Mickey Fulp. I I'm honestly not sure how to call that. So we'll just let the cards fall where they may. Again, it, uh, it might be another one of those situations where um, I don't know that that is uh, against the rule books. Got him hooked with the waist lock. Mickey Fulp holding on to the ropes. And that should have, you know, that is a good call by referee Reggie Cassidy to break that waist lock there. But I believe it wouldn't be blowing smoke an illegal maneuver. I, again, I don't know. Um, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know that there's something specifically in the rule book saying that you can't uh, that you can't uh, blow water vapor into someone's uh, face. I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that it's 100% legal. Oh, purple nurple, my buddy flowers. That's just unnecessary. Well. I mean, it, it is a, an unorthodox maneuver. However, it is a very painful maneuver. Anyone who's had that done to them know just how painful it can be. Nice, nice Kids, try there. that to your brothers and sisters and tweet us your thoughts. Nice flying elbow there by Buddy Flowers. He has Mickey Folk. He has Mickey Folk rock on the mat right now. But you it's tell here. Ton, elbow drop combo by Flowers. Mickey, I don't know if he was ready for a match tonight. Look at he he doesn't have his gear. He was able to find knee pads, was able to get his boots on, but this is a very last minute match. You're you're right. It it is a last minute matchup. And um, Buddy Flowers wasn't expecting to wrestle either. So it's a uh, and uh, looks like uh, referee Reggie's making the call to take away the the uh, the vape from Buddy Flowers. That's a very good call. But and again, like we said, I don't I don't know that it's specifically against the rules. But if the referee makes the call, then uh, then that's then that's what we're going to go by. And now Mickey's going to that really unparalleled world he can go to when when Mickey Fulp needs to be Mickey Fulp is such a bad man in that ring. He's not afraid to take them shortcuts to a secure wins. And that's what he's looking to do tonight. Start off on the right track. He dropped the dead late weight that was Joey Harrison. And now he gets to go straight on, start getting some wins, put yourself back in some maybe world title contention. Well, the thing is, he could have gotten a world title contention again. I'm sure that he and Joe Harrison would have been able to get a rematch. But... Mickey Falk let his anger get the best of him and broke up the tag team. Well, there is a fact there was no comparison to what Mickey Falk did to Joe Harrison. Now you're right there. He gave him quite a beating and uh, took out all of his frustrations on Joe Harrison. Jawbreaker by Falk. Buddy looks just disoriented. Every time he starts to get a little bit of momentum, Mickey's right there to cut him off, take advantage of the situation. That's what makes Mickey so dangerous in that ring. Have I said I love Mickey Fulp tonight? You have. You have. And, and again, Mickey Fulp is a great competitor. He is, uh, he's always had that killer instinct. He's always been a fighter, but now he's, he seems to be even more dangerous than before. And Mickey Fulp not afraid to take any shortcut he can to get the win. And I, that, that is the smart tactics I talked about. 
Mickey Phelps got brains above anything in the way he can conduct himself to get victories. And he's showing it here tonight. This recently returned aggressive streak of Mickey Fulp. You're absolutely right. Like I said, he's always been aggressive, but uh, yeah, he's taken it. He's taken his aggression to a whole new level uh, here in the past. Uh, ever since, uh, ever since losing the World Tag Team Titles and turning on his not only tag team partner but longtime friend. Joe Harrison. That's the backstabber, and that normally spells certain doom for whomever's on the receiving end. Got the leg hook, but Flowers still in this matchup. That time, reaching for the ropes. Unfortunately, arguing with the referee will not get you a quicker win. You got to stay on him, Mickey. You got to ground and pound, and that is how you win matches. You're exactly right. You're not going to talk your way into a three count. You're not going to say, hey, that was a three, and the ref be like, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. You win. Yeah, that's not going to happen. You can argue with the ref all day whether or not you agree with, uh, with this count. You think it's fast or slow. At the end of the day, it's his call, so you just got to go with it and, and, and concentrate on your opponent. And crowd solidly behind Flowers. THC is hyping up the Mount Airy faithful. Hits the rope. Big elbow. Same time by Fault. Hooks Mickey. the leg. He hooked the leg, however, he didn't he didn't have the he didn't have hardly any weight at all distributed over Buddy Flowers' shoulder. So he was able to kick up. Mickey Fulp is in full control though. That's the dangerous thing. Mickey Fulp hasn't done too many cheap tricks. He hasn't sent Buddy out to the outside. And, and Pretty Boy Lane handing off some foreign object to Buddy Flowers. And again, Mickey Fulp taking his focus off of his opponent. If that's got any of that, you know, uh, recreational kind of activities in it. That could disorient Mickey Fulp. And, you know, that's not just, that could put Buddy Flowers in danger also if Mickey was having to be intoxicated like that. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. It's hard, it's hard to know exactly what is, uh, uh, you know, what, what substances are, are in that uh, vape cloud. Nice kick there by Fulp. Fulp's got him firmly in the corner. Just dissecting Buddy Flowers. Anything Buddy thinks of, Mickey's right there. And again, Mickey taking full advantage of those ropes and the five count. Looks like he was uh, not only choking, but maybe uh, raking his ear across those uh, across the second rope. Buddy Flowers is holding his ear right now. Mickey Fulp has Buddy in a very, I, I've used the word dangerous a lot, but this is really dangerous for Buddy Flowers. I don't think Buddy knew the Mickey Fulp he was getting tonight when he issued this challenge. Yeah, you may be right. This ain't the drink of beer, have a good time, Mickey Fulp. This is the drink of beer and kick your ass kind of Mickey Fulp. Looked like uh, Fulp was going for a pile driver. Fortunately for Flowers, he was able to reverse it with the backdrop. Big knee there by Flowers. And another. Since Fulp to the ground, he's back up to his feet. But he looks out on his feet, swinging a miss. Beautiful springboard crossbody. Gets the two count. Five minutes remain. Flowers making his way to Mickey the top Mickey may be hurt, but Buddy's about to go to the highest point in North Carolina. 
And wait a minute. Oh, wait. What the hell? It's the mask man. Who the well, hell? I guess we know now that it's not Mickey Falk. Falk Fiction. Pretty Boy Lane he and JT out. run him off. Falk. Two, three. And just like that. Mickey Falk. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match. Flowers with the assist from the Mickey Falk. Good job to Mickey Falk on a well-deserved win, but who is this guy? Well, we know who it isn't. We know it's not Mickey Falk. I don't. Buddy Flowers is very bewildered right now. I'm in the back a lot when we when strategy is being discussed, and I haven't seen any masked freaks running around back there. I don't know what's going on. Buddy's confused. I'm confused. Yeah. Good Lord, Kevin. Look at that thing. Yo, Chris, come here. Look at this. You oh, that's that? huge, man. dude. That might be the biggest one I've ever I seen. Know, yeah. right, look, look at this. Look. That's huge, man. It's like a baby's arm, man. Yeah, yeah, I, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, man. yeah I know. It's, that's nice, man. What can I say, guys? You know, George, so, go check uh, this out, man. Check that you out. See this. What is all the? Oh my gosh. Hey, that's right. It's the king's hot dog. Yes, sir. It's a very good hot dog. <laughs> Oh yeah, the rumors are true. The King Dog, 14 inches of pure beef. Alright, you can shut that crap off right now, Darren. You've been playing that nonsense for me for the past 20 years. You will not play it again. If I have to walk out here with no music, I would prefer that to that garbage. Do you understand me? With that being said, my name is Dangerous E. Corey Etzel, and if you don't know me, You've been living under a rock for the past 23 years. I first stepped foot in AIWF ring in September of 2000. My first match in the AIWF was against Don Carson. I could speak louder. Who? Where, when, how. Now I'm sure you don't understand what that means, but that's the five W's. I'm filling in the rest of them for you. That's great because after tonight, you're gonna see me a lot more. I was molded off the backs of men like Terry Funk, Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, Jerry the King Lawler, Hardcore legends. You fast forward to the 90s. Men like Terminator X. That man right there, Brian Danzig. Rick Diesel, who's back there somewhere. They rolled into the 90s, and they took a style, and they innovated their own thing. You done? I've got all night. I've got the microphone, you don't. But what I'm getting to 
Long story short, is I am sick and tired of these wrestlers coming out here and calling themselves hardcore. The only thing hardcore about you is your BO when you're done after your match. That's it. So I'm back at AIWF Mid-Atlantic, and I'm here to make a statement. No, not like your bank statement, a negative one. A positive one. See, that was a good joke, and it went over all your heads. Whew, right over. Point being, AIWF Mid-Atlantic champion, hardcore champion, excuse me, Ty Tyson. I expected a little bit more for the hometown hero. <laughs> Ty Tyson, oh, he's so hardcore. He's the champion. He's the former world champion. <laughs> Ty Tyson, if you have any guts, put that hardcore championship on the line against me right in this ring. Thank you. I know it's very hot. I appreciate it. Ty Tyson, I'm eagerly awaiting your answer. Darren, don't you dare hit that music. All right, well, there you go. There you have it. Uh, I knew that when Corey Essel came out here, he was going to make a statement. He certainly did. He has called out the new AIWF Mid-Atlantic Hardcore Champion, Ty Tyson, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what the answer is.